However, the LCS in particular prioritizes Sona more than basically any other region in the world. Looking at current present statistics, Sona is picture banned in 78% of NALCS games. That drops to 62% in the LEC, 32% in the LCK, and 22% in the LPL. And this patch in particular, since I actually nerfed Sona, yeah. have the speed you AP ratio on the E, uh, has dropped from a global presence of 54% to 18. Yet it does seem like NA teams are still very willing to ban Sona. I'm not saying that is wrong. I think that is a regional difference because they put more time into the pick than anyone else. So they were going to be more hesitant to drop it even after receiving nerfs. Yeah, I think one of the first times I even saw Sona Tarek as a bot lane was in NA Academy. That seemed mm -hmm. one of the first uh, places that brought it out. I think TSM Academy themselves were one of the first forerunners there. And of course, now one of the actual picks and bans themselves with plenty of support bans. Braum and Tom Kench early grab, so back to tank supports down here. Silas for contract wants to do a bunch of damage down there in the jungle roll, answered by Akkadian Sejuani, and an early Ezreal here for Zven. Yeah, Zven back on the Ezreal train. That was yep. pretty much the only thing it seemed like he ever played uh, back in 2018. Played a lot in spring as well. This will be his third Ezreal game of this split. And because they have the Sejuani, even though the incredibly strong Sejuani Aurelia duo is gone, it is still a strong pick. I'm going to go ahead and grab a top laner here for Hauntzer before it's all over. And they're going to blind this Aatrox here for the top side. So their bot lane farm, probably an AD carry here for um, FBI, uh, as well as uh, their mid laner for Froggen is going to be what's picked up last right here. That is FBI in the lineup. We saw him on the screen earlier. As you don't mind, those words definitely down to the bottom right. Jace, right. I would probably assume Kennen also banned away the most typical counter picks to Aatrox, the ranged auto attackers. Yeah, I am looking forward to see what contracts can do on the Silas. It's incredibly potent against Sejuani at level six. Also reasonable at du dueling in the early game. Uh, not the best ultimates to steal so far on the TSM side, though. That's true, worth pointing out that, uh, I mean, Sejuani is at least nice for the engage, but uh, let's see what else we can find for themselves. Yep. Sivir off the table. Of course, we know bot lane needs to be picked at some point as well. Sivir uh, still very, very high priority. and. Of course, with Rakan not going to be played since you already see the Braum, there's not a huge reason to care about Zaya either. You don't typically solo her. Akali actually does make sense. Of course, we need to consider Broken Blade and Bjergsen both very good at taking the game into their own hands. Yeah, getting rid of a lot of the flex pickability, this uh, kind of gives me the realization that unless we see a Kiana, which could be seen in basically anyone's hands, yeah. uh, seeing their solo queue accounts, it also leaves Azir and Corky completely open, which are uh, Azir in particular, the most picked mid laner this split in the LCS. I, if it is so heavily picked, I'm a little bit surprised it's not banned more for teams like C9 who want to try and actually win through lanes. But knowing Bjergsen and Frog in style, I think Azir would be a pretty good choice. Azir would be a good choice, but it's not going to be blind picked here for the Frog inside. Kaisa going to be grabbed up for FBI, so we know it's a Braum Kaisa bottom lane. We just saw C9 play it, and now Golden Guard is going to play it here themselves up against Tom Kench Ezreal. Should be a pretty free license for Kaisa to get a lot of gold. I don't really see you getting bullied out by that. Tom Kench will outlane a Braum, but I still don't think you kill off this Kaisa and stop her from farming any gold. So that should be pretty safe. Kiana Azir. Kiana Azir could be the matchup. Flex him. Oh. Because Broken Blade plays both uh, those champions top lane That's as well. That's true. He pulls so. out the top lane Azir. Azir comes through the very start of it. The Velkaz hover, the Shadow to Froggen, the Vagar hover for similar reasons. Always fun seeing some of those uh, less common mid laners coming around. And now what do you play up there? You know you're against Aatrox at the top side. I, you know you're blind picking mid. Yeah, I think you actually send the Azir top into Aatrox. Uh, or I, the Camille could definitely work too, but Camille mid can work specifically <laughs> with Sejuani uh, yeah. is when we did see it a little bit. But yeah, it's probably Azir mid, Camille top. All right, I, I'm waiting to see the day where Froggen flexes into support and who he takes mid. Because who he has been an amazing <laughs> and brilliant soul mid player, Froggen has several support wins in LCS already. He had roll swap with Krepo a few times. Uh, then it happened, his Blitzcrank is legendary. Twisted Fate comes through. I like this champion back in play. We've seen TF top as well, by the way, so you never know for sure, but probably mid here for Froggen. Yeah, and I'd very much expect Hanser to be playing that Aatrox going up against the Camille. I wonder how the jungler influence is going to affect that lane because uh, as we mentioned before, even though Hauntzer has been so strong in the laning phase, a plus 17 CSD at 15, uh, he has the lowest jungle help and gets ganked the least because oftentimes contracts is 
trying to make stuff happen elsewhere on the map, and that draws jungle attention away from top lane and lets Hansu go to work. And against a Camille, I think the Aatrox can do that. It's just when that pesky Sejuani gets involved and they yeah. stack up the Sejuani stun in 1.5 seconds and kill you, uh, that's when it becomes a problem. Cool draft for TSN. They banned the Aurelius, still managed to sneak in the Sejuani and just added Camille in there instead. Melee auto attacker with attack resets plus Sejuani. A really, really good combo. I would expect to see TSM try to make things happen up in the top sides. Coaches shake hands, lineups on your screen, contracts on yet another Silas game. Had a very good one previously, puts out a lot of damage, but you are light on tanks. It's Braum for the support roles, your only obvious frontliner. That can make things a little bit difficult. You can sometimes break him down. A lot of backline threat, of course, still available and plenty of hard engage for TSM. Camille could lead things up, Sejuani can as well. In a pinch, Bjergsen on Azir. This could be very spicy as TSM are in playoff position. Golden Guardians to game behind, also in fifth, sixth. And let's see what we get ourselves into the rift as TSM faces Golden Guardians. And I'm really excited for this matchup, Freak. We already mentioned the fact that Bjergsen had 12 kills the last time they played Golden Guardians on Azir, so we get to see that again. But we also get to see what could be a season-defining moment for Golden Guardians. What is the difference in our perception of these teams when we think of TSM versus Golden Guardians? It's like, well, if Golden Guardians would have clawed out a win in that 50-minute game, they would actually have a better record than TSM. And then looking forward, Golden Guardians' remaining schedule is the hardest in the LCS. So you could consider this a must win. And it's a team that they have beaten in the spring and been very close to beating so far in the summer. We'll see if they can hold another spot. Look for a ward in the tri brush, but TSM did not put one down. I'm assuming that's some level of research and expecting where TSM's wards likely are. This Maran not happening. It's TSM playing a bit more defensively. You can see them standing out in the corners looking for long range vision, and they won't get caught by any of this here. Of course, there's a fake gold cards into Braum Flash Q. You can often kill someone outright. TSM play defensively enough that they are not spotted, not killed and it's going to be just safe. Yeah, I think if they weren't against uh, Tom Kent Sejuani, Golden Guardians would have actually invaded harder. Braum usually just wins early invades. Braum Ezreal would be the best, which they don't have here. They have the Braum Kaisa, but it does push contracts to a topside start, which will be pretty unknown from TSM, yet it is fairly known for Golden Guardians that Acadian is stop starting blue side, especially with a jungle pro. You see that all the time in solo queue. A lot of times in pro, the dual lane is just going to start in the lane for pressure. Well, smart by Acadian. Takes a path that actually dodges... Uh, actually, no, that's their own, it's their own ward they put down, so never mind. But he dodged uh, it. He dodged his own ward in the Raptor camp, so that's that's big brain right there by Acadian. That's that's the bottom panel of the Galaxy Brain comic. Now? He's going for something really cheeky. I think he's expecting contracts to go. I guess up there can he? But is he creep jacking? He's so, just gonna go get copper. So is actually not a great level two champ because you need the W that's to come two. through. He literally just has Q and E. But with the melee, he'd be able to get stuns. Uh, I'm a little surprised he's making that move. Maybe he expected contracts to do a different path. Yeah, ends up just coming back to take his blue. He loses about 15 to 20 seconds of experience here. And he basically lost the first Krugs as the timer there, and they kind of go to match back and, and go through the jungle camps once again. But yeah, Broken Blade hit level 2 off that minion right as the game was coming around. He did dodge all the wards, but sadly, Hanser was playing so far back that he was not gankable under the turret, and, and there was nothing to be picked up there. But yeah, that could have been the possible crazy first blood where you show red and suddenly your top side. So kind of going to have an earlier clear for sure here. Of course, the Kaden is also on the single target side of the map with uh, kind of unlucky there. It gets the Talisman and he's taking blue and Gromp and red, all of which you'd kind of rather have Hunter's Machete for. Absolutely, you would. Uh, thinking about how this bottom lane is going to play out. I'm curious to see how much attention Acadian will eventually pay to it. Uh, they picked an incredibly safe bottom lane. Uh, but they're also up against Akaisa, who you don't normally want to give an uh, easy laning phase to, especially... Oh, that's so much damage. Smooth is one attack from dead, and he was already down. If FBI wanted, he could flash an int for the kill, but doesn't go for it there. Instead, is let Smoothie walk back into you know, the back lines there, regening off with potions. Yeah, so it definitely looks like Akkadian's going to spend most of his time topside, which we saw him do a lot more in the spring than we have necessarily seen him do in the summer. But if he can't get an advantage there, it looks like Golden Guardian's going to try and push something hard bottom lane. That would be a very early dive. There's a lot of damage towards Haunter. The stun is available. They pull that one in. A lot of damage coming across. Two more autos, but the turret's going to do too much damage. Now it's on the bottom side. No heal available. They find the first stun. The rest of the damage. The chain lash comes out. They find the kills. And aggro's drop perfectly. Golden Guardian's first blood under four minutes.
Yeah, teams playing to completely different sides of the map. Haunts are actually able to get a lot of health out, does burn his flash, but the successful dive and kill for Contracts is Silas. Also taking into account how Acadian didn't have an efficient XP clear, if Contracts hit six before Sejuani, that's just a go button for jungle invades to try to take complete control. Because you can steal someone's ultimate before they're six, use it on him and try and get a solo kill on someone. See how clean this dive was right here. Watch how they kind of balance the turret aggro because whenever you see the guy who gets first blood not have to immediately flash out, it means they've done something right. So Huhi grabs turret aggro, landed the Q so he's able to get the stun, knows how many hits he can take, and then since the kill has already happened, no one retakes aggro. So it's literally just three hits on Huhi. That's about as clean of a 3v2 dive as you'll ever see. Tanky is champion on the team at that point in time, and it's no problem. Just to be safe, he burns summoner heal just in case he needed it. Didn't, but it was just to, you know, make sure nothing went wrong. And it was pretty beautiful right there. So Golden Guardians off to a great lead. And everything I've seen from this duo has been, can they play aggressive and can it work out or do they get punished? They've been, they kind of have one one direction they go and it's forward. Sometimes their counter gets yeah. horrible. Sometimes they don't and they pop off and this seems to be the latter. Hey, they do stuff, right? They, they, they stuff. go for plays. And uh, in the past, that had been an issue for teams that have Froggen on them, right? They'd say Froggen does nothing but sit in his lane. I actually would say as well, uh, part of Golden Guardian's resurgence is Froggen is playing much more aggressively. He's had a fairly dominant lane phase, about the second best laning phase mid laner in the LCS, and he's forward a lot, right? So many times you used to see Froggen with a low forward percentage. This year, uh, it's up at 27.7%, which without contacts means nothing, but it's around like third highest in the league as far as being pushed up. Golden Guardian's a more aggressive team, pushing forward a little bit more. Froggen trying to bait some cards out. Nope, no play to be had. Just gonna keep auto-attacking the minion waves back and forth. Equal CS across these players. Contracts, I believe, dodges vision with the path he just took right there. No pings from Breers at the very least. And as the minion waves are cleared back and forth, Manny was a little bit low. But Contract is safe to grab this scuttle and can also grab Honeyfruit if he needs it. And he just puts the hurt down on some jungle monsters. Pings towards the control ward. There's the vision, there's the resources, and Bot lane's still looking pretty solid for the Golden Guardian side. Aggro's the dragon, realized, yep, there is a ward in there, but they can try to do it anyway. Pulls out of the pit, yeah. even though they know what's happening. So with the bot lane push, this feels pretty safe. And Froggen, sorry, Bjergsen had just recalled. Yep. So mid lane priority and bot lane priority, this is a formality. Yeah, and specifically with Silas, Twisted Fate, uh, Bjergsen was, I would say, forced into cleanse, which will give Froggen a uh, lane pressure advantage. They both recalled. Froggen teleported back, gave him mid priority, and New Bjergsen wasn't going to be there. So, yeah, as you mentioned, completely safe to take that Infernal Drake, very powerful Drake, on top of control. Beautiful stuff, and very early on, too, of course. Drake's only spawned five minutes in. They grabbed it within two minutes of it coming up. And look at that, double Infernal going to be the early sort of set of resources there. So, Golden Guardian's happy they're already winning the bottom lane. They High rolled Drake's this point. Every single champion <laughs> on their team, aside from um, the Braum, is really going to care about the bonus attack damage and the bonus AP, so that's gonna be nice. You you kind of lucked into a lot of synergies here. Yeah, if only they could have picked Leona, then they'd have the Guardians. Oh, if only, yeah. That what you're going for, Freak, is that no, what you wanted? No, I wasn't even going for a TFT. You other than high like, roll, you use synergies. Well, my vernacular is now very TFT heavy, but I really meant it in the League of Legends sense. All right, uh, I'll give you that one. Yeah. There's very few TFT champions in this game, actually, yeah. compared to a normal <laughs> like, glacial comp or something. Yeah, one third of champions, roughly. Uh, either way. Ezreal coming soon, from what I hear. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's what I hear. I don't know if it's actually true, but that was on Reddit. Way to leak everything for you. Okay, great. Not yeah, <laughs> pretty sure it's from someone's Twitter. Regardless, Haunter and Broken Blade. We talked about this being the least ganked lane of all time, and meanwhile, it's just a fight in the top side. No jungle to be seen, just the battle of resources. Haunter forced to burn his ult for the extra healing, put some damage towards Broken Blade, but his Q's Ooh. on cooldown, takes a turret shot, didn't want that one, and it times out. Yeah, Frog and or previous versions of Haunter would try and shove this lane in to get the reset. Uh, by himself. This time, Contract is actually there to allow him to do so. So, Haunter actually couldn't have crashed that wave unless Contracts came up here. So that's a that's kind of a team play there. And now Contracts is six, as we mentioned, being able to steal Sejuani ult. Uh, feels safe running into the jungle to try and get stuff done. Contracts he chooses to not hit the Scryers Bloom to give away his positioning. I think he was hoping that there was a chance he could uh, sneak in a top side and maybe find a dive on a broken blade. Yeah. Half HP, you know. Definitely killable, but Camille gets the recall off. Execution is calling Rush, definitely really good against Aatrox. Very <laughs> healing focused champion, running Conqueror. 
which can add even more in the late game. And TSM, look at the Smoothie, building the freeze, but Golden Guardian's unable to push it in. They can't threaten Smoothie enough to make him stop this, so it's going to be the slow recall. Golden Guardians do have double teleports. They can get back if they have to, but it will mean a little bit of CS is lost, and Smoothie going to stop one of those. Nicely played right there by Smoothie. Absolutely. We see it both ways as well, kind of looking across the items being built up. The ADTF is going to be the choice here, Trinity Force into AD items, even though the AP build honestly performs quite adequately as well, but I imagine because of uh, Silas Jungle and a Kai'Sa AD carry, they think there's going to be enough magic damage that the ADTF with maybe a bit more split pushing prowess uh, in extended fights will be their choice. Add some durability just in case you really need it, since you get Triforce with health on that item as well. And okay, over the wall, Brooklyn gonna find the stun and contracts. Yes, burns the Camilla as well, but the Haunter nowhere to be seen, so it's a 1v1 for a while. Level does it for contracts, but it's so much damage that Brooklyn's pushed out at 600 health. A couple interesting choices there in that fight. Contracts, smart, I think, to steal the ultimate and go all in. But then Haunter had a choice to either burn Flash and go over the wall and threaten to kill on Broken Blade, which would have effectively traded flashes with him. They both choose to uh, save their flash, and I think it's because Haunter's actually expecting a lot of jungle attention, knowing he is eventually up against Camille, and the only way I think Camille will get ahead is if they can actually convert a kill. And we'll see the kills convert as the junglers are both kind of near the top side, and award spots contract is he wants to push Acadian away. Right now, a two-camp lead for the Silas jungle has a completed jungle enchant as well, which is quite nice. That's part of why that fight went so well on the top side, so temporarily items up, but boots down can be relevant also if things happen to go weirdly. Not going to pull Broken Blade back in, but Hans is just going to do his very best to push that Camille around. Basically equal farm, but now it's going to be the attempt toward Grip Now This is not the yeah. super safest, as Azir is actually pushing in and Sejuani's nearby. Yeah, TF could drone an ultimate, but Froggen would get rid of uh, his minion wave, and right. I think TSM's here for the collapse. Bjergsen actually stuck in, in the lane, though. So an STP, and there's no match right now for Golden Guardians. Now the sun is in the pan. A lot of damage with Condors. They knock him down, one for zero. Now the fight continues towards Akiti, but Harold is actually helping. Gonna jump away, burning the flash to stay alive, and there's and TF ultimate in. for some vision. No TP from the bottom side, as they're kind of fighting right now, two on two. Actually, Smoothie, he's just gonna die almost, getting so incredibly low. Now the ult comes across, flashes just barely gets out of it. And they're gonna look for a little bit more as Froggen actually comes down to the bottom side, and this could be two yeah. kills. I don't think there's a way out. They're gonna find the first one. Agro once again onto the Brom, who he will lose his life. No, the stopwatch. Froggen, it's so close and just barely. The stopwatch is the nick of time. Do what they're supposed to do, and they keep the squad alive. They must have been practicing this turret aggro for the bottom because <laughs> they're playing it very well. Maybe didn't need to use that stopwatch at the end for Froggen, but he had it from his runes anyway, so he can just get rid of that. Get the first plate as well, and keep the lead even after giving up first blood and the Rift Herald in what was a bit of an unfortunate engagement top lane. We'll start here, and if you're doing the Rift Herald, you need to make sure your mid laner has river access, but they don't actually see Acadian coming up, and Froggen isn't willing to walk in because the rest of Golden Guardians are in the back of the pit. Basically, if Golden Guardians wanted a chance in this fight, they needed to be further up so they could join Frog. Because Froggen got zoned off on the back, he had to give up. But I think it was a really smart pivot. TF Ultimate can go really far. So you thought he was at the Rift Herald, which is why TSM was safe to take a fight in bottom lane. He actually ends up last coning bottom lane. Smoothie uses his Devour early. Froggen flashes in. Puhi would die from this hit. Perfect stopwatch. Froggen was like, this turret's pretty heated right now. I don't want to accidentally die because the turret actually does ramp up and damage over time. Yep. Probably didn't need the stopwatch, as we said, but for the safety, uses it. Yeah, he, he pulled aggro himself to try to get it off of Huhi, and I don't remember how long it takes to turn to cool down. I don't know if a stopwatch itself is enough to reset the damage per hit, uh, but if it is, then he would have been fine just by his lonesome. Regardless, no kills, only some consumables used, and I would say pretty well used down here. Bot lane still the point of power here for Golden Guardians. Overall, 1,500 gold lead to them is impressive. Yeah, and even though this game isn't high in kills, it's feeling very high in pace, with Infernal Drake already being up and going down and it's a very important moment in the game for Golden Guardians in particular. They've been very good, best in the league at gold at 10, by the way, but then they go to seventh in the league by 15, because this 10 to 15 minute stretch has actually been very bad for Golden Guardians, so they have to hold on here, and we're gonna see a lot more action. And of course, part of that happens right there as Harold comes in at 13 minutes, knocks down three plates. You're gonna credit for, I believe, all of them there, and that's 480 gold to the mid laner given over, and that's gonna be a lot of change. Basically makes up for the kill and assist that Froggen just got from that bot lane died. Yeah, and taking stock of ultimates, all of them 
are up, aside from Froggins, which will be up in about 15 seconds. Teleports are also up from the top lane. This second Infernal is big. They That's a pick. lot of damage. A zero doesn't come in in time, though, from Contract. So Froggin ults and gets away. Contracts could have pulled the trigger, could have ulted over the wall. That would have been a kill. They didn't realize he wasn't going to have the damage. But now Infernal Drake has started, and Froggin's low. Yeah, it is or a TP-less Azir. I understand how you got them mixed up. They both play Farm Heavy Champions in their game, so it's yeah. fine. But Infernal Drake going down right now. Sven wants to contest it. Kadian would love to steal. Oh, gonna be a good enough fight though. Nice attempt by Sven. He's the one who feels safe enough to do so. Kadian, no blast cone, no flash. Means the one way trip only by queuing over the wall. As second Infernal comes to the Golden Guardians. And you can see again, 2,000 gold up nearly with double Infernal. They are certainly winning in this game right now. An impressive record. GGS were on their way out of playoffs with the hardest remaining schedule. Almost only tough teams ahead. Yeah. And pulling up an early to mid game lead over TSM means maybe they really have it in the tank. Yeah, they not only have to play TSM today, they have to play TL tomorrow. So they would not want to go into the final two weeks at six and eight, which makes this game all the more important. And if we only look at last week, uh, oftentimes we'll check in at 15 minutes and say, okay, one and a half thousand gold lead. That's usually like a win or a loss for a team. But they had some of the most variant games of all teams. TSM had that seven and a half thousand gold lead against Cloud9 last week and lost. Golden Guardians, by the way, had a massive deficit against CLG and then was able to come back and win. So it does feel like, uh, as far as trending last week, Golden Guardians came back from a huge deficit. TSM lost a huge deficit. This is the reverse. So Golden Guardians has got to be feeling pretty good. You can see across the board where the gold leads lie. I do want to point out that TF is at about 530 gold or more from his passive right now. So mm -hmm. uh, earned money, not from cheating, as TF literally is canonically cheats in gold income. Uh, still fairly close down here. The, again, plates and extra CS that um, Jirgson has gotten. Generally has been better than what Froggen has gotten from his kills, but the passive makes up the rest of that difference there. We still set at this 2,000 difference. It's Wave moves continue, Triforce is done, but so is the Nashor's Tooth, which feels pretty comfortable. Now to the bottom side, wow. Isolated Q, big damage towards Ven. And this one is going to be Mana Mune Kaisa, by the way. So yeah. very, very high attack damage in this build. Yeah, Mana Mune, once that turns on, Kaisa really gets a lot of damage. And again, Golden Garden is looking to do something bottom lane. The TSM is here to answer, but they're going in. Big hit right there. Giant stun on the front line. Look at a lot of damage towards his Braum. Puts the shield on. Early speed is barely flashing away. Stop watch by a few more seconds. And now the FBI going forward. They get the kill in a smoothie as Contrax finds that late, uh, late side dive. And it's a one for zero. Golden Guardians is able to walk away. Hey, they are pulling off some successful aggression here with both Infernal Drakes winning this fight. Hoping to be able to get this turret down. It's going to be a little difficult. Zven has a lot of mana. Bjergsen also has blue buffs, so unlikely to get it here. But smartly, Froggen already up. Oh, Contract, Contract going stolen. Stunned to a Kadian, but watch out. Yeah, this is going to be death for him. Does TF go for the big play? They're going to find out Kadian. The gold card's not going to land anyone else just yet, but now they got to walk back away. It's a one-for-one one long term, I guess, for that play. And then out they go again. I was just saying, smartly, Golden Guardians <laughs> moves mid lane so Froggen can get a large amount of turret damage because of their tempo lead, but Contract saw the play. We're gonna rewind to the actual 4v4, which turned into a 5v5. GGS has good vision control. They stun Acadian, but that is all the ruse to try and get onto Smoothie, who you think is going to be able to get away, but they're able to snipe him down just at the last second. Nice cue by Contract, and then Everyone teleports in, that kind of resets things. Broken Blade was unable to land his EQ, which maybe would have actually just been like confirmation biased, and then he would have suicided with his ultimate, so probably smart to flash out. And Golden Guardians keep their lead. Keep their lead. Next Drake up, Mountain Drake, 90 seconds away. Only really good for winners in a game. It's pretty hard to hit turrets when you're behind, so that's one that Golden Guardians wants, and TSM needs to get back into the game for it to be useful for them. Not as important if it's stolen away, kind of through that lens. You wait for what's next here. Triforce nearing complete for Broken Blade. First power spike that he's going to want is available when he can get back to base. As he walks back through and still looks for his opening to get into this one. One kill so far in the game from stopping a Rift Herald attempt. Yeah, credit I think should be given to Haunter for this early laning phase. He received a lot of pressure early on, specifically that first gank he had to absorb at level four that burned his flash. Uh, when Golden Guardians used that to get the kill bottom, now, he's getting ganked again. Broken Blade dancing around almost every single knock of the Blast Plant. used now a flash of the wall. Big heal for Hans, but now getting found out. Stun after stun. They might just have the damage. He's running, and they get the kill. Broken Blade secures it 2-0 in the top side. 
Now Contract steals away at camp, running away, but he's gonna get slowed down. Has it all for Tom Kitchell. He's not gonna do anything in combat, and he gets shot right down. Two quick kills for TSM. That is a caster curse, so I apologize <laughs> for Golden Guardians fans about giving Haunter some props right there, and now TSM uses the pressure generated from both top and bot fights to take the mid-turn. Look at that, the game turning around pretty quickly. Two and a half thousand, shrinking the lead, but about a thousand gold picked up across the map. More than that, actually, from the two kills and the turret picked up, so tightening it slightly right now, and with respawn still happening for GGS, this mountain trake is just a freebie now. TSM earning it from the kills they got. Yeah, so we're still in for quite a game three. Knowing how Golden Guardians has basically sat at this 2,000 gold lead for the past 10 minutes, TSM has the scaling of Azir. Honestly feels a little eerily similar to the last time these teams played this split where Golden Guardians was ahead, but you looked at Bjergsen and he had high farm and a lot of kills, and you're thinking, how is Golden Guardians really gonna get on the Azir to kill him? He does have cleanse. Right, so Bjergsen is in a position to potentially carry this game. Broken Blade could still, now with two kills, maybe start winning 1v1s against the Aatrox. But a lot of it could still be on Golden Guardians to find the right fights with Twisted Fate, Silas, Braum, uh, all these options. It's going to be a good one. It is going to be a good one. Two items done for Twisted Fate, two items done for the Kaisa. Same for Sven's Ezreal here, same for Bjergsen also getting into. Double flat pen, of course, pretty normal, but going all the way to Merlinomicon again. Anti-healing, pretty useful here. Silas and Aatrox, both self-healers, pretty relevant over there as Contracts. Not gonna have the chance for them to go for this Baron right now, although two Adam Kaisa could maybe do it with Rage Blade. They don't quite feel safe enough, and out they go. Yeah, I think an underrated Farsight totem there by Sven basically knows exactly the moment where the team could be doing Baron. Golden Guardians is definitely trying to sneak it. They didn't even get close, right? Nope. Sven saw it right away, and then Golden Guardians had to back up. Now fighting the bottom side, Rugblade is barely getting out of that cage and still feels safe. Checking in at that match specifically, gold lead very oh. close. Praga now getting caught out, flashing, but still taking the true shot barrage. Not quite a range for the last hit there, but that is the mid laner forced out. Super close on those kills. Uh, only sitting at about four and a half uh, combined kills per minute so far in this game. It was an interesting thing that I saw where Golden Guardians actually averages uh, 0.74 combined kills per minute in their games, which is the most in the LCS. So in terms of how many kills are in their games, Golden Guardians plays the fastest pace. I think part of that would have to do with contracts being so relentlessly aggressive, can be with the new acquisition of Fuhi and FBI who consistently go in because uh, not typically what you would have seen in past years of Froggen's team kind of just goes to show the evolution of that player and this team has gone through. Absolutely the case, and still holding a lead against TSM means they are still doing quite well as a squad. 2019 has definitely been a Golden Guardians year. Definitely an upgrade over the previous, and still looking pretty solid into this one. Still take them in the Drake lead, still take them in the Gold lead. 3,000 up consistently here. And they're gonna be Bot Turret going down, though. Broken Blade really coming into his own now in the mid game with Triforce done. I don't think it's even close anymore. Hanser gets some farm, but he does not have lane pressure anymore. Yeah, and Contracts doesn't seem interested in going and trying to create Camille kills because uh, it, the team comps do cancel each other out slightly when you have Smoothie who can assist in side lanes if you try and fight. And Golden Guardians have Froggen who can assist in side lanes if you try and fight. So normally either having Tom Kench or TF would give you the one through one advantage. That is a little bit canceled out here because both of them are sitting mid and both teams can collapse. They find the stun though, a lot of damage with the Canadian passive on from the pop now and Aftershock he's still so tanky. Bravo comes across and he forced to flash away. Now where is the big play coming across? All five Golden Guardians are here. And they're gonna walk away, not able to take that fight at all. So much health to burn through when Acadian can proc Aftershock, which I believe he did with his ultimate at the start of that engagement. Golden Guardians threw absolutely everything at him. Uh, he's still able to get away without even having to burn Flash. Very, very tanky man as he puts some armor and some health into the pool. and. Has a stopwatch waiting in case he needs that as well. Picking Sejuani going to be difficult if the resources are around, if the teammates are nearby. Good rewards now for both players, both teams that stay in this pit. The Golden Guardians knocks down some vision. Contract steals go to gold from FBI pockets, and we're gonna be okay. Sven going towards Ludens on Ezreal there, so his Qs will be hitting a lot harder than any type of sustained auto attack damage. I think that's the right choice against the Kaisa, who if the Kaisa ever does close on you anyway, you're gonna lose the duel. So Sven trying to keep Kaisa at arm's reach, and still absolutely anyone's game. Yeah. 23 minutes and 40 seconds in. 
feeling like TSM is getting better results in the side lanes. We saw the bot lane pushed in by Broken Blade versus Haunts a little while ago. That turret fell. An un unanswered top lane push for Bjergsen knocks that one down. And despite the Drake deficit and the gold deficit, TSM are getting the turret lead now in this game. Edging the gold closer, only 1,500 apart. Now they have the deficit they had not more than a minute and a half ago. So very good play out of the TSM side. Yep. Their mid game's going great. At the end of the day, the gold you see top lane is just a number. It's influenced by certain things like Kleptomancy or TF. What's important is who's actually stronger in the game. And that's shown by what they can actually get done. And it looks like TSM has been feeling slightly stronger in the last three or four minutes or so based on what they have accomplished. And a nice Squires Bloom spots up what Golden Guns was trying to do is they would hope to sneak into the bottom river. Broken Blades down there as well. Whoa! That is a big chunk towards FBI. He's going to have to run away from this one, going towards the ability power in the build. You can see with that Stinger, that's going to be an Asher's Tooth later on. But Ulti, Ooh, okay, he's going to be fine. Saw it coming. Well, double Mountain Drake, TSM. Yep. All thanks to Sven Ezreal. And that's going to be a really important thing to track throughout this game. Uh, as this? Golden Guardians actually tries to go for Baron. It's seen. I believe Froggen walked over that Scuttle Crab vision. So here comes TSM to try and stop him. Ooh, he's got to build space. He's got to knock away who could possibly steal. Smoothie has Spellbook available. Acadian's around. Oh, it's not going to land Burn on it. him. And it's going to be the attempt. Not going to find the spite, though. They pick up the kill as well. One for one, though. As a 4v4 play, Acadian's Broke Blade over the wall. Who's he going to find? Hauntzer would revive if attacked. So instead, it's towards Froggen. They get the damage. There's the kill picked up on Hauntzer. That was massive. Goes in for Zven, simply revives. Contracts gets the cleanup. Zen is trying for everything he possibly can, but Hauntzer is here. Find some oh. damage. Sven no. might find more. He's got a red buff, and it's a trade kill as contracts throw over the wall. The surviving members still bear and buff on of GGS. Whew, what a risky call by Golden Guardians, but it absolutely paid off in this situation. We'd been talking about how the game had been trending in TSM's favor. TSM had just gotten the Mountain Drake, so Golden Guardian says, we're going to Baron. They do not get it stolen as both junglers just threw their smites out. Froggen ends up getting it. And then the fight afterwards, TSM is like, well, we have been feeling stronger. Do we go? Do we not? It's one point. They don't have to do this, but they think they can get it with the Camille. But watch Concert. The healing is actually yeah. the thing that I want to point out right there, which is ultimate available when he lands the Q3 on two people. He healed about a third of his health. And then this Q dodge right at the end buys enough time for Zven to all in and gets the ace for contracts. And that is excitement of Frog and Golden Guardians fans gonna be happy with this one. Sven gets the one for the end of the day, but it is a team fight lost. Two extra kills to GGS. Baron buff on two. Baron money on them as well. As payment for a Mountain Drake, I take that trade every time, no matter what. So GGS making a very important clutch play at the 25th minute of this game. And with the Nashers completed on FBI, he's getting an incredibly strong point, and that's. What I was alluding to that we needed to track throughout the game before they ran to Baron is whether or not FBI can get his damage out. Because the lane went so well for a Kai'Sa Braum. You don't pick Kai'Sa Braum and expect to win lanes the way the FBI did. Now it's about whether or not he can make that work in team fights against the range and the assassination threat that TSM has through Camille and Tijuana. Right now, TSM having to play the back foot. It's going to be a lot of push here for Golden Guardians. They've got that three-item spike that's so powerful for Kai'Sa. They've got a TF Triforce BF Sword a twisted fate to help pushing continue as well as two turrets knocked into the mid lane. You can see TF already in the top side of the team rotating over. Enough vision for Golden Guardians. They knew that they were not getting punished. That ward right there that was just killed by Smoothie, that tracks everything they needed to know. You know the Froggen was safe to push in, but they, without the Repfar Cannon charge, don't quite get that auto attack, and Bjergsen keeps that turret alive. Always hard to push against a late game Azir, and Bjergsen is approaching that point, especially when he completes his death cap. He's gone full spell pen, actually, uh, at this point. Not sure if that's actually the right choice with almost no MR stackers yeah. on the side of Golden Guardians, but still, anytime he got in his ear with three items, as long as they have some AP on him, he's hitting pretty hard. 40% yeah, magic penetration, which, and it goes, of course, first before flat, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the highest MR on the opposing team is 85 on the Braum. You're still gonna put about, you know, 30 to 40 magic off, which is still more than the Sork Shoes does by itself, so not terrible. Now Hans gonna find himself in a fight as well. Here comes TF from the top. There's gonna be a lot of damage with Broken Blade, who just jumps away, stays alive, but now there could be a re-engage. Froggen could have pressed E flash and gone for the play, doesn't do it though. It would have been an overextension, yeah. probably. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked about with the canceling wolves, right? You see a 1v1 bot lane, or what you thought was a 1v1. Here comes Tom Kench, here comes TF. Guys say, all right, just kidding. We don't want to go for this one in either direction. And TSM 
does get the ultimate out of Aatrox, but it costs Broken Blade his flash and all. So away they walk, but now you're going to see FBI running back towards the mid lane. Baron buff is gone. Third Infernal spawning in one minute, and Golden Guardians have enough gold that they probably feel pretty comfortable about this one. They should be able to retain control. At this point, you don't really reset anymore. This is the last chance you get to buy. Ooh, man. That's a tough call for TSM if they want to try and contest this third Infernal because it's right at the point in the game where they think, okay, we've held on for most of the Baron buff. It's gone. We're only a little bit down, but do we really give over this third Infernal? Because they don't have vision control. I think they're trying to get vision, and it's high risk they could get caught. Q misses. Damage to the Cadian. Red buff goes over to FBI. That's a nice pick up there. This Infernal's worth 10% attack damage or AP to TSM. Only seven, two Golden Guardians. As the Drakes are all front-loaded. Mm -hmm. uh, Mountain Drake does not affect Smite, doesn't affect true damage, but it will affect if there is like an Ezreal steal. You never know, that kind of stuff can happen. True. We've seen crazier ones, like Rank 1 Janicus taking Barons. Throwback 2013, you might have been in that game. Yeah, GG Bloodwater. Exactly. And if he's watching today, he actually plays in Collegiate nowadays. Yeah, UCI, top end team. But really, uh, such a big moment in this game right now. Third Infernal with the 5,000 gold would be big, and it looks like TSM's at least thinking about contesting, but it's so risky to try and Guard. go for a fight. It's gonna be Ezra looking for some vision. Akkadian loses the uh, extra armor buffs now, so he's a bit squishier again. Sun's gonna be found on a Sejuani. Second one comes through from the Silas Steel with an FCC. Oh. It is picked up. Ezreal not able to steal it with, I think that was a W going in, so uh, they're gonna be fine with that one. There is the third Infernal Drake picked up, 24% bonus attack damage and ability power, that's going to feel pretty positive. And TSM never really willing to commit there. I think they were hoping they would kind of win the fight before the Drake was down. Got to give props to GGS right there for not allowing TSM to steal, but also not over-focusing on the Drake and allowing TSM to get a fight. Too often you will see either of those things go wrong, and Golden Guardians holds firm on both counts. Now we have a 350 attack damage Aatrox in the top lane for Hanser, thanks to the items he's picked up. In fact, those numbers, yeah, 345. He's gonna feel really good off this stack and the very, very painful top laner as Ven clears away wards. He's actually sitting on, sorry, clearing away minis. He's on wards. He got something nearby. With Arcane Shift, he should be fine, but Contracts are just right around the corner. Yeah, there are two solo laners off in the sides with Teleport that can join an extended fight, so don't, ex don't be too surprised if someone goes in for a fight, but mostly they're just trying to get lane priority for this upcoming Baron. Broken Blade is in the bottom lane, but has teleport available and sees him of decent enough wards that he can TP into a fight in okay position, but he's still pushing the bottom lane. He's still going for the turret. So this is actually now kind of gun to Golden Guardian's head. You got to mm -hmm. make a choice right now because your turret's going to die. Well, they don't have to make a super hard choice other than, hey, Hanser, go stop that dude, because at least TSM isn't starting the Baron. If TSM really wanted to force a decision, they would be starting the Baron right there and making GGS commit to a fight. But TSM not willing to do that because with already their mid lane priority being lost, if they lose a fight, the game is over. Push if they can make it down there very quickly. Steal Sejuani once again, contract. And now, again, the Baron is the attempt. Hans, you're taking plenty of damage there. Gonna wait for the next round. Is yeah, simply not enough can be done here. Golden Guardians, you have a decent poke, FBI, and Froggen okay at that. And the Sejuani nerfs Freak. He delayed his Warmogs because his max health wouldn't be high enough. And now when he takes chip damage of Baron, he can't consistently go back in. He actually mm -hmm. does need some gold to be able to go get that Warmogs. Otherwise, this Baron play doesn't work very well. He's still at half health as GGS has now gained control of the Baron area. About 500 gold short of the rest of the items he needs to complete Warmogs. Went stone plate second, and there's the bottom turret falling. So TSM still splitting the map well. True shot barrage guarantees. Okay, yes. Well, they're going to do are it. On it, but at least they're damaged as the wards will be knocked down, but not quite. They're they willing to go for it. They're burning as fast as they can. Here comes the play. Stun comes across. They're going to try to burn it down. Brought over the top, and it will be pinned up. Smoothie picks up the smite, and Acadian will drop. Is there any more, though, as the TPs come across? It's just the one kill. The oh, no. smite. Smoothie makes the game saving play, and they've still got Broken Blade pushing. Yeah, Hunter teleported into the fight that was already over, so Broken Blade now has a Baron push if he wanted it, but he's going to play it safe because TSM says, all right, our Spellbook support just took it. By the way, both supports had the ability to do the Smite Spellbook right there. And Broken Blade trying to get away will do it safely. Game saving steal by yeah. Smoothie. That probably ends the game of Golden Guardians having to watch the fight once again. So we know Golden Guardians is willing to do 50-50s. There are four Smites, by the way, right now. So at about 2,000, you just start pressing it. It gets to 60. Uh. Smoothie flashes in to smite it for the final one. I don't even want to say like, oh, the jungles didn't smite. There's four smites. It's so clearly a 50-50 in that one. Golden yeah. Guardians got the first, TSM gets the second. 
we feel like we're pretty close back to even aside from those three infernos that GGS has. That's a heartbreaker, because I think the call normally for Golden Garden is like, okay, yeah, 1500, double smite. Who he hit his contracts did not. Mm. And it was Smoothie who came in and hit the second one, essentially, who he chunked it so that they could have double smited. And either communication or misclick or who knows what, but it wasn't quite there. And so it's TSM now at the power play. Two minutes left in this one. And we'll see what they can grab. They've got to work back a 4,000 gold deficit, but the items are looking pretty okay for the squad. Death cap soon for FBI. He's going full AP Kaisa here. Stacking the magic damage on the roster. And again, it's ADTF and an Aatrox who's fed. I think that's pretty reasonable to kind of balance out the sheet here. Yeah, and as we have a little bit of a lull as Elvidrake's going to be up in 40 seconds, I uh, want to reiterate what an important game this is for GDS. The hardest remaining schedule amongst LCS teams. They play TL tomorrow, uh, so you would not want to lose both of these games. If they could win both of them, they'd be amazingly positioned. Additionally, this is the best game FBI and Fuji have had, I think, yeah. by far. It's been their solo lanes that they've been consistent on. They've actually just kind of split with TM7 solo lanes this game. It's been FBI who has the 700 gold bounty and CS advantage on Sven. But TSM actually pushing top lane while the Elder is up to try and draw attention away from that area and get in a good push on. They're gonna get some decent damage right here. Chunk comes through as Ven knocks the top turret by one third. The empowered minion is doing even more here. Hauntzer can't find any damage. The broken blade just destroys these turrets. TSM siege going so well, splitting them apart and finding the damage. This could be enough. Finds a little bit there. And here's Tia from the top. Broken Blade's gonna ult, and he's not gonna be in the gold card. Nice hold as the kill does come through. But it still means pressure from the top side. They're gonna find one there, and here's the engage. They find the stun. Oh, Tip one eaten by Tom Kent. Now FBI over the top. They're going for this play right now. Froggen, reach out of the play, but ooh, it's who he's so terribly low. Froggen, of course, a flash over the wall. Low health on a Bjergsen. One more attack could do him in. If they wanna chase into the Azir turret, that's gonna do damage here as well. They gotta be careful. 5v4, but health bar is too low to chase for GGS. So, everyone has four players alive. GGS opts not to heal, they're running there. Correction, they have five players alive in this one, which does give them the advantage. TSM might end up trading the inhibitor, but that would give two and a half minutes of Elder to Golden Guardians, an incredibly tight moment right yep. here, Freak. Okay, so TSM with Baron can also push for maybe turrets possibly as well. Keep in mind it's a full eight second recall. Will be at least the inhib, Smoothie waiting to save him in case he needs it. And in 5v4, the Elder is always going to happen. They grab that, but two turrets and an inhibitor were taken by TSM during the Baron buff. If I just look big picture at what just happened, you gotta say Golden Guardians wins the last minute and a half. Because TSM had the Baron buff, they had the late game Azir, they had the setup to get lane priority towards Elder Dragon. They instead opt to try and create pressure top lane in a split push, but then Golden Guardians gets a kill and now has this Elder window, which negates really anything that TSM would be able to do with that open inhibitor, uh, I believe, and it would set them up for an eventual second Elder if the game somehow surpasses the already longest game of the split for both teams the last time they played, which went 49 minutes and 40 seconds. Well, we maybe have a lot more to go here with Triple Inferno plus Elder Dragon. 497 attack damage on Haunter's Aatrox. That's a little bit high. It's a lot. Uh, he's going to lifesteal his entire health bar if he lands a Q. <laughs> so watch out, everyone on team. Yeah, 900 damage. Woo! There you go, 1,098. That's a lot of damage. This is an ideal situation where he's got four items and triple <laughs> infernal Elder Dragon. It's an oddity, it's an aberration, but still painful. <laughs> yeah, and again, we're in a little bit of a holding pattern uh, with an Elder Drake team who doesn't have inhibit. Golden Gardens wants to get very aggressive. Uh, they just have to make sure that they don't get that bottom inhibitor taken, which as you mentioned, was taken uh, during that last Baron engagement. They could try a dive, but it would be very risky because at this point in the game, either team loses a team fight. The death timer is long enough, the bases are destroyed enough, the game's over. Almost certainly the case right here, but you can see the setup. Now the kind of punch in the gut for Golden Gardens is Elder Dragon buff will end before the Baron spawns. They can use that to gain yeah. vision. They can push down mid. They can knock down all of the wards. They have to react to top lane pushing in, which Aatrox is doing right now. Hauntzer, though, his teleport timer is 38 seconds, which is technically after Baron spawns. Hmm. That may matter in some cases. Broken Blade, of course, other side of the map, knocking down minions himself. Yeah, I said the Golden Guardians wins that Baron Elder exchange thing, but it's a tough call. Like, whenever you have uh, an inhibitor down, another inhibitor open against what is turning into a late game Camille. It's really all in how you play it from this point out. The map is in such a neutral space. And Golden Guard is trying to play for the bottom side. You can see TF sitting inside the base gate, hoping Broken Blade extends enough 
that there's an opening, that they can find the kill like they did last time. Or they're playing far enough back that it's not going to come through. Instead, it's TSM with the numbers advantage pushing into the river. Yeah, but Broken Blade also has to be wary of Twisted Fate. There's the ult. Here's the 1v1. Is this going to be the play? A lot of damage coming in here. Sterks pops as well. He's going to jump right back out, stay safe. Out he goes, trades ult for ult. And Actually, now the fight is up on the top starts. side. They found Froggen! And that's going to be Garden Angel down, but they can re-engage one as GGS puts the ults across. They have the burst though, and TF is dead. Are they really going to go for the Baron? I think it's going to try. Over the wall is Acadian. The fight fight! And it goes to Acadian! It's two still the same game from two different players. But FBI over the wall finds a kill on the support. So it's a 4v4 in the map as turrets go down. It's it. the push! He's going for the base right now as it's just time being bought. And across the wall is just a support. It's just from. I don't think it stopped them. The fight still continues. It's still damage for Broken Blade. Who cares about the rest of the kill? He's doing all the work. And TSM gonna win the game through top lane. What an ending for such a back and forth game. Live by the Baron, die by the Baron. And that game, I feel like Golden Guardians pressed their luck one time too many. The previous Baron Forces Freak at least had some type of knowledge discrepancy or TSM was going for something. That was just a straight 4v4 where both top laners were full health. To me, that was a really, really bad Baron call by GGS down the stretch. They may have been feeling the pressure of the open and hib and the Camille bottom, but Hauntzer had already repelled that push. Uh, great job by Acadian to get that smite steal at the very end, though. You have to give him credit for that. And also for Broken Blade for being able to play a split push Camille against Twisted Fate, which is very difficult throughout the whole game. Definitely was. Ends the game 2-2-2. Two, two and two. Spent so much of that game in the side lane and was able to withstand all the attempts Froggen put at him. Smiles for TSM, but that was a tough one though. A very, very tough game. They do pull it out. They still remain in the top four. They're now half game Ooh. above CLG uh, sitting there. I guess technically right now in third place as a result of that one. But wow, what, what a brawl. Yeah, I mean, ultimately all that matters if you kill the other team's Nexus. That's right? exactly what you did. When you're looking about trying yeah. to make it in the playoffs, when you're looking to playoff seating, that's what matters, I'm sure in the coaching rooms, both of these teams are going to have a lot to say. A sure. lot of the game, I think, was actually very well played in the way that they were trading dives based on jungle pressure, in the way that the Tom Kench and the Twisted Fate were canceling each other out. But as the game ticks on and you get into those situations that you really just haven't been in that much, sure. I think familiarity and consistency in roster does play a part there. Acadian made it to the summer finals with this roster of yep. five players, right? Yep. TSM had cool heads throughout the end there. I feel like Golden Guardians did not, and that's why TSM won. I agree. TSM better in the clutch. They were still down in kills and gold, but they got an excess of what matters. We're going to send it down to Riv, who's got an interview with the victorious bot laner. Thank you, gentlemen. Great castle day. I am joined by Sven after TSM takes down Golden Guardians from behind as well. At one point, a little stressful with the ganks in the bottom and then some explosive Baron fights. Relive a few moments for me in your own words. Kind of what was the focus for the team to make sure TSM would win? I mean, I think we fucked up. Uh, sorry, we messed up the early game. Um, and we got behind the ball in, we got dove, and we were just losing the early game. And they had better uh, situation champions, so they got two dragons off of our ball and losing, which was a slight disaster, I would say. And then I think later in the game, their macro was worse than ours. I think TF should stop Camille from uh, splitting on sidelines, but they didn't really manage to do that. So Camille just got a lot of towers, and at the end, they had to have a hard choice between their base and the burn. If you get the burn, we win. And if you get the base, I mean, we win. So uh, it felt like their silent macro wasn't the greatest at the end, given that they had TF, who was winning silent. So. Always a patient game from TSM. It seems like the team is always able to see much past your opponent's strategy and allow that kind of slow game to be a win for you. Looking at kind of the growth for you this split, coming out, um, looking to do as much as you could after kind of a rough finish, what has been the goals that you've been trying to reach and have you been able to kind of hit those check marks a bit on the way here to playoffs? I think after we got rolled over at Revivals, we tried to be more proactive in the last two weeks we played. And I think, I mean, it, it failed some games. Like against CLG, when we played Yasuo Gragas, it didn't go so well, obviously. But I think even against C9, we tried to be really proactive in the early game, try to play much more fast paced, try to, you know, win through the first 20 minutes of the game. And the fact that we were ahead against C9, I mean, if we couldn't snowball the game, isn't something that I'm sad about because we just need to get better at, at closing. But we're trying to be more proactive and early game focused. But this game wasn't much of that. So, yeah. I guess we, once we, you lose, because you, you aren't good enough, you go back to what, what works without being good, right? Because yep. our combo isn't that hard to play, but it's, it, it works in NLCS, so... 
Right on. Sven, final question for you. Playoffs are coming up now. Does the focus change, scrim pattern, anything for TSM? Or is it kind of the same way until you get to those real tough games? No, I think that everyone TSM, players, staff, and management, whatever, has really good work ethic. Everyone tries hard to be the best that they can be. And I think our overall work ethic is super good. So I'm happy that we keep the same pace of work at all times. And playoffs will be in notice. So I'm looking forward to it. Sven, thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. TSM picking up another one to put in the win column. We'll throw to the State Farm Analyst desk to break that down. Thank you, Riv. That was a sketchy one. Came down to a base race in the face of a triple infernal for TSM in order to take the game. Let's relive those final moments before we work our way back through it and figure out how we look got to this place. Look away, Golden with. Garden fans, because oh. this was a 50-50. Once Ooh. again, the second 50-50 of the game and to make matters worse, your top lane teleports away, whereas Broken Blade gets to teleport into the base and end the game. Yeah, and this was right after uh, Froggen got picked. You know, they were in a fine spot on Golden Guardian side, and he was hovering between going to the Baron and going to bot lane. And in transition to the Baron, he gets picked off and killed, and that's really what gave them the freedom on TSM side to really go for that Baron contest, because if they go for the Baron contest and Froggen's alive, they can lose the fight and lose the game right away. But there, after they had already killed Froggen, they're like, oh yeah, let's go contest the Baron. We're not going to lose this fight. And they could just focus on stalling while they ended the game. Golden Guardians, the victims of uh, multiple botched 50-50 yeah. attempts throughout this game. But I do want to roll it all the way back to Champion Slack because I kind of want to set the stage uh, for what we saw in this game. In particular, uh, you'll notice the TF pick for Froggen, uh, as well as the jungle matchup, because we will put a spotlight on yeah. both of these junglers. Contracts need to get stuff done early. So the TF is a really good last pick anytime somebody wants to go with a split pusher. So I love any time that it happens, because as we saw with the Tom Kench as well, you have so many globals that it kind of fizzles everything out. And even with TSM, now that they've shown the Azir in the top lane, it also happens to be a flex pick since Camille can also go into the mid lane. So you have to account for both matchups. And so they figure, why not? TF can do well into both. Well, it's also really good because your bot lane should beat theirs. Your Their mid laner, if it is Azir, is not very good at roaming. You have a top lane counter matchup and you have the more aggressive jungle matchup. So this is such an advantageous early game for, for Golden Guardians. And they do a great job initially of snowballing through there. Right. All of that is up to contracts, right? Getting things done yeah. early and perhaps a little bit of frogging again yes. on that TF making visits to the side lane. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the early game played out for Golden Guardian. I looked at this game exclusively through contracts' his eyes, actually, and he had a really great pathing for the early game. This was sick. This was a perfect clear in the top side. Do blue buff straight into a gank into the bottom lane, wasting no time whatsoever. And this is the snowball that led them to contest this dragon because you have mid priority, very easy. The bottom lane was able to shove out. But then when it came to the Herald top, without the priority being established, Golden Guardians dropped the ball starting this Herald. And that to me was the theme throughout this match where Golden Guardians is very good at taking these objectives that are already sort of preset in winning lanes, but when it came to setting up your own plays of making sure that you've done the due diligence with vision, then they kind of drop the ball. And especially playmaking, I think uh, Contracts does really well, but he sometimes gets a little over aggressive. So here at the start of the fight, excellent job starting off on the smoothie, gives his team a clear target to focus down, and that puts a lot of pressure on TSM, who end up falling behind in this fight. And then you're afterwards set up in a position to maybe finish pushing down this turret, but instead of just focusing on finishing off the turret or maybe threatening a redive or anything like that. He goes and takes a 1v1 versus Acadian, who is, you know, pretty tanky, all things considered, which then kind of baits the rest of his team, and it does lead to a one-for-one. One. But now you're not really getting ahead, and that bot turret stayed up for you a while. You have to commit the TFO, and alternatively, you just get the pick away. You force the Camille to teleport down. You let Aatrox sit in the top lane. He finishes that turret, and you've already secured a top lane advantage, which will manifest itself very nicely when it comes to the split pushing, because Camille now lost so much, she can no longer handle the Aatrox, as we saw in the later stages of the game. Hanser was handling Broken Blade yep, pretty yeah. well. Oh, without a doubt. It does feel at times uh, that the consideration is only for the upside of the play and not always taking into account 
you know, the downside if things don't go wrong. In a number of cases, yeah. that's exactly what happens. And Golden Guardians pays a dear price for some of those missteps. Yeah, the decision tree is often, should we do this or not, as opposed to what if we just did something else altogether and considering multiple scenarios? Yeah, I mean, as much as we've been talking about uh, contracts, it's the other side with the Acadian. This is the first 50-50. They've already actually set up a really good battle line to take the fight, but instead, Acadian can test the Baron as opposed to trying to win the fight that's sure to come afterwards. And that kind of puts his team in a tough spot here where they have to go for this. It is still an extremely close fight, but there's Onsler with that huge flash third Q to set up the win for the rest of his team. It was very back and forth. Sven still was almost able to kite this one out, but uh, it was just too well played by Hanser there. And eventually you see contracts coming in for the cleanup yeah. to protect. To a large degree though, because following this is when we end up with the uh, the two Barons that go 50-50 over to TSM. First being smote by uh, Smoothie and then the second time around uh, smote by Acadian to yeah. close out the game. That there was just this... Uh, sense of uh, franticness and pressure that Golden Guardians was feeling where they had to make this kind of a risky play to win, which is yeah. peculiar when you're looking at a team with three Infernal Drakes. And you also have a Twisted Fate. I mm -hmm. liked hearing what Sven was saying, that they he didn't feel like the Twisted Fate was being utilized to the maximum value and taking no control over multiple side lanes and then threatening to make a numbers advantage. We saw at the 20 minute mark, Golden Guardians had no problem starting a Baron and testing the waters. When you have a Twisted Fate, you can afford to do that very easily. You push up, they commit to you, you pour it into the Baron, right away you take these objectives very freely. And Mark, for the side of TSM, I think they'll, yes, be happy to have walked away with the victory, but as we heard from Sven, the early game went so poorly, taking a lot of the responsibility for that himself in the bot lane, and still very much looking to clean up some of those elements of their play, so they're not having to make ridiculous 50-50 comebacks in all of their games. I mean, this is the exact opposite of the kind of progress we were hoping to see out of TSM post Rift Rivals, where they're starting to play more aggressive, they're doing interesting <laughs> things, and then they fall back into this passive scaling opposite bot side progress. of the map. Yeah. yeah they've regressed like this is not the play style or champions we want to see them really playing and though it did work out like you said it was off the back of a lot of 50 50 barons and golden guardians almost crushed them in the early game all right squeak through on this one tsm did but on the other side of the break FlyQuest and clg duke it out game three is coming up after the break